confusion apparently about the the time for this class, the 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 time for the lecture and the time for the lab. Apparently, I don't think it was accurate on the website. Just so that you know, um, the I if I'm not mistaken, and and I could very well be mistaken, but the lecture goes from 10:15 to 11:30. All right. This is a four credit hour class, so you get an extra bonus few minutes of lecture. All right. The lab, I think, officially starts at noon and goes from noon to 12.50. But that gives sort of a half hour gap. Um, I normally start the lab right at 11.30. And then um, you can either go an extra um, half hour if you want or, or you can call it a day at, at 12.30. All right. So that's what we're doing. Um, I don't know what did it say on the on the on the website or on your schedule. My schedule said I have ended at twelve twenty. Okay, and it started eleven thirty. Yep. Okay, I guess it is right then. All right, my my mistake. Because yeah, that okay, it starts at eleven thirty and goes to twelve twenty. Excellent. All right. I know in previous semesters, just because of scheduling quirks, we had to start the lab at noon, but. I guess we, we've corrected that problem. All right. Um, a lot of you I know, um, but we'll take attendance anyhow. Kathleen Brackett. Here. Phil. Here. David Carter. Here. Jeremy Clowers. Right here. Benjamin Cusin, 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 Chad, Dylan Green, uh, never mind, Michael, Jeffrey McGilvery, okay, I'm going to take a shot at this one. <laughs> Sibengile? Sibbo? Sibengile? How? Sibbo's fine. Sibbo, okay. But it's the one you know. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm I very can always tell when I'm coming. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, and I'm, I'm very sorry. I just. Uh, it's not your fault. Yeah. Um, Michael Panko? Sail Yes. Is that close? Yes, Sail Okay. David Schneider? Here. Samantha Shank? Staff? Must have been before they had a teacher in here. They had staff listed. And they're taking a class now. Uh, Jennifer Stevens? Uh, Benjamin West? Okay. All righty. Okay, a lot of you have had me before. Um, which is, which, um, that'll make some aspects of, of the class easier, but some of you have not, or some of you I don't recognize as possible that maybe I've had you in an online class or, or something, and I just don't, don't recognize uh, you from there. So, at any rate, what we're going to do initially is we're going to go over some stuff in Angel, and um, if you're not familiar with Angel, we can, we can talk about it in lab. Um, I'm going to focus on um, how things are uh, done um, in, in this class and how things are set up in this class. Um, and then we'll get right into the material uh, for this class. Yeah, that might help. All right. Mo the 
material for the class is on the content tab with an angel. We'll go over the one at a time, and then we'll spend most of our time discussing the course information. Um, the assignments, we'll look at uh, your first assignment. Some of these other things I'll introduce to you, and we'll review them later on. Course information is where the syllabus and other items are. All right. We'll spend uh, a fair amount of time talking about the, the syllabus. Communication methods. Well, we can talk about that. Uh, I, I put that in a lot of times for my online classes, but it's still relevant. Um, and so on. Assignments. Towards the end of the class, we'll talk about your first assignment. Resources. I have... Um, Any number of resources I've collected over the semester, um, different semesters rather, and, and I will likely add to these. And if you find a particular good resource, I can add it to this list. And finally, a discussion forum is a place for you to ask questions between classes. Um, you're, you're welcomed, in fact, you're encouraged to ask questions between classes. Uh, I, I know one thing in a programming class is, is it's really possible to get hung up on something if you're working on it and sort of spin your wheels for a while. So because of that, I mean, I, I can understand you having questions between classes and not wanting to wait to lab to get it resolved. Um, so therefore, I encourage you to email me between classes or use the discussion forum. Think of the discussion forum as like asking a question in class where everyone can see the question and everyone can participate in answering it or at, at very least see what the answer is. If you have something that really is specific to you, then it's probably best to, to send via email. But again, the bottom line is, is uh, get your questions uh, answered. With that in mind, let's look at communication methods, ways of getting a hold of me. All right. Couple of things couple of ways that you can get a hold of me. One way is, as you know, we have a lecture and a lab section uh, or, or session for this class. So probably the best way to discuss issues that you're having or the, the, the most logical place um, for you to discuss problems uh, that you're having or questions that you have is during the lab session. Um, feel free also to ask the questions during the lecture session as well. If I think it's something that um, it would be best deferred to discuss in lab, then I'll, I'll just tell you, well, let's, let's cover that in lab. Uh, sometimes students have questions about particular specific problems that they're running into that may not be relevant for the rest of the class, and, and I'll suggest that we discuss it in lab instead. The bottom line is it's no harm asking um, in class, and, and you know, oftentimes questions that students have in class are relevant to, to other people. You know, There's an adage for teachers that if one person has a question, there's a good chance other people have the question too. So. You know, you may be sitting back thinking everyone else is perfectly understanding it and you're confused about something, but let me tell you, that's probably not the case. If there's something you're confused about, there's a real good chance that other people in the class might be confused about it as well. And as such, it's, it's good to, to ask the question. Um, so the lab, between lecture and lab, are the logical place for you to ask questions. Uh, but there's a lot of other opportunities that you have as well. For example, you're welcome to attend any of my other classes' lab session. And by the same token, I've, I've made my other lab, other classes, uh, invited them to attend your lab session. So we may get people from other classes in, in our lab session. Um, I have a lab um, Monday through Thursday. I have a one day class each of those days, and I have one evening class each of those days. And so there's one lab session during the day and one lab session during the evening. And I can give you, uh, I don't have the, the, the dates or the times in the rooms off the top of my head, but if you have questions and you want uh, additional help, uh, let me know and I can make sure that you get that information. Um, I think that works out well. You know, in general, people, the lab time is, is working time for people and they can work things and the, the advantage is, is that there's a machine that has the necessary software on it and I'm there to answer questions, and other students are there to discuss problems that, that you might run into, and so on. But 
and many times, you know, I'm in lab and I'm just sitting there. If everything's going smoothly and students don't have questions, I just kind of sit there. So to take better advantage of my time, I offer other classes the opportunity to come in on any of the labs. So, you know, you can crash my Tuesday, Thursday evening lab if you want, or my Monday and Wednesday uh, day or evening lab. So that's another way that you can get questions answered. The discussion board on ANGEL is yet another way, and we've already mentioned that. You can email me within ANGEL. We can set up a chat room in ANGEL. Um, one thing that's difficult with email sometimes is when there's a, an, a, a set of interactions where you ask a question, I give an answer, you don't quite get the answer, so you ask for clarification, I give another answer, maybe I'm a little vague in my explanation, so you ask a follow-up question. That can be a lengthy process uh, via email, right? Depending on how often each of us check our email, um, that can actually take what something that's relatively simple and extend it for a, a couple of days. Uh, that's why the lab is a great place for you to get your questions answered, but we also have the opportunity, if, if it would be on a weekend, let's say, is we can set up a little chat room on Angel. Whereas, you can ask a question, I can answer it, you can try that out, and go back and forth. I don't have any regularly scheduled chats in Angel, this is sort of an as-needed thing. So, uh, you know, if, if you're in a situation that you think you'd benefit from that, let me know and we can, we can arrange that to happen. Um, I can also call you, like during the weekend, um, if you have um, issues, um, or other times. I will say that, generally speaking, it's better to send me email rather than voicemail. I check my email way more frequently than I check my voicemail, so it's better to do that. Office hours, I don't have any office hours the first week. Our office hours are effective the second week. And uh, I will announce them when I, when I have determined them. You could also send me email through LC's email account as well. Either Angel or LC's email, really doesn't matter. And the bottom line is, is you know, the wild card is, is if none of these methods seem to work for you for any particular period of time, just ask and, and we'll figure something out. All right? I have regular scheduled office hours, but it's possible they may not work for you. Well, we can try getting together during one of my other lab sessions, or again, we can arrange some other time. I try to make as many possible ways for you to interact with me um, as possible. It's also valuable for you to interact with other members of the class, too. That's a good way to learn, is to have discussions in lab or discussions via the forum or via email or whatever. So I invite you all um, to do that as well. On to the syllabus. Listed on the top are different ways that you can contact me. Here's a description of the class and the outcomes. It's a good idea to keep these in the back of your head as we continue through this class. One thing I, I'm a firm believer in is Given the fact that you all can read, there's no point in me going over word by word things that, that you can read. So the syllabus, I just want to hit some of the high points on and want to point some things out to you. And my lectures don't necessarily correspond one to one to the textbook. I hope to, to cover material in a complementary fashion and not necessarily cover the exact same material. You know, you have the book, you can read that, you can get the insight from that. But in addition, you have my lectures as well. And uh, my, my thought is, is that that will give you a broader, um, broader uh, sort of uh, experience than if it was just one or the other. One thing I focus is that this is your class. I don't know how many folks are in here, maybe 13-ish or so. But relatively speaking, this is still a smaller class. 
So, therefore, every one of you individually makes up a big portion of this class. Um, so if you're confused about something, um, you know, by all means ask. Ask the question if it's not connecting. Um, it doesn't do me any good to cover material if you're not understanding it or if there's still questions remain or if you're still fuzzy on it. Um, so as such, feel free to, to, you know, to stop me, to ask questions, to ask for things clarified. Um, and again, the worst I'll do is I'll tell you, well, you know, we need to talk about this one-on-one -on -one in lab if it's something that um, I think that you need some additional attention on. I do encourage you to check Angel periodically throughout the week just for any special announcements or when we start getting into assignments and, and grading stuff uh, to review that. Here's a bunch of the college policies that you can take a look at and read on your own. As far as late assignments go, I think I'm fairly flexible as far as late assignments, a lot more flexible than some people, but I do kind of have to draw the line at some point. Um, However, am I right there's a big difference between a student that is working really hard on something and struggling with something and making progress and then they finally get a correct solution a day or two late and a student that simply blows off the class and doesn't show up and I don't hear anything from them and turns in something a couple days late, right? In my mind, there's a big difference between the two, you know. Um, as such, I'm going to be, you know, I reserve the right to be flexible on an individual basis. So if you're having trouble with something and you don't think you'll get it in, or if there's circumstances in your life, you know, some emergency comes up and you have to go out of town or, or whatever, you know, just let me know. And I'll be more flexible as far as your grade goes, because then I understand it. All right? The one thing I will say is if you're continually falling behind and you're continually late with assignments, that that's a sign that, that something probably needs to change, right? Because as flexible as I, I, I try to be, there is a point at the end of the semester where things need to be in, all right? There is sort of the final due date, all right? And if you're getting things done and you're turning them in on time, that's a sign that you're making good progress in this course and there shouldn't be any issue. But if you're falling behind and every assignment that you turn in is, is late, that's a sign that maybe you need to step it up. Maybe you need to talk to me. Maybe you need to spend some more hours uh, working on the stuff or, or whatever. All right? Um, you know, people talk about working hard versus working smart. And I think both of them are necessary. Um, obviously, you need to work hard to be successful in, in most classes. But I have seen students that work incredibly hard all right, but for whatever reason, they get stuck spinning their wheels and they don't ask for help. All right, so in my mind, when you're working on something, there's sort of two kinds of levels of frustration that, that you might experience. And the one level is the kind of frustration you might experience when, you know, you are working a puzzle or playing a video game or something where it's, it's fun. That's part of the rewarding aspect of it is, uh, of programming, is having a problem and struggling through it and working through it and making progress and finally getting a solution. Right? That's a very rewarding experience. So that's one level of frustration. And if you're experiencing that, I'd say okay, because you see you're making progress, you see that you're moving in the right direction, and um, you know, you're on the right track. Some students, though, I hear spinning their wheels and telling me after the fact, I spent, you know, 15 hours working on this assignment, or I spent, you know, a disproportionate amount of time for, like, just a regular normal, not, not a project, but a normal uh, lab assignment, you know, and I hear that. And, you know, I think to myself, like, well, you know, that's, that's admirable in one respect, that you're working that hard and that you're taking it that seriously to work hard. But really, it's not my intent for this to be, like, the focus of your life for the next 15 weeks, right? I, I 
do know that there are other things for you to do. And I, I don't plan on assignments, you know, taking exorbitant amount of time. All right? And oftentimes when you have a case like that, you have students that are working hard, but they're really spinning their wheels. They're not really making any progress, and they're not moving forward on it. And they just keep trying things. And again, that sort of persistence is admirable, but if you feel that you're spinning your wheels, that's where you need, um, you need to take some sort of intervention. You need to try something different, you know. Uh, and that usually relates to talking to me about it, showing me your code, or whatever. One thing I will ask, and, and this should be probably a, a uh, should be understood, but uh, again, on occasion, students, um, uh, students uh, uh, sort of miss this point. If you, if you are approaching me about a problem that you have with code, if you're like you're emailing me about it, be sure to send the code, all right? And again, you know, that sounds like it should be self-evident, but on occasion, I'll have a student say something like, I, you know, I did this and that happened. What's wrong? I don't know what's wrong. You know, how am I supposed to know? You know, I, I appreciate your confidence in me and, and your, your thought that I am so wise that even without seeing the code, I can tell you that on line 15 you forgot a period or something, right? But the truth is I'm not that good. You know, I need to look at the code too to help search through the answer. So I'm being a little bit facetious here, but I, I think the intent is, is that if you have the code and send it to me, you know, you'll get a, you'll get a better response. Okay. Class is comprised, the grade of the class is comprised of a project and homework. There will be approximately 60 points for the homework. The project is worth 40 points. If we do not have exactly 60 points, we'll prorate the, the points. Every now and then, you know, I'll, I'll assign an extra assignment or whatever. We might end up with 68 points or you know, for whatever reason, we might end up with 56 points. Well, I'll prorate them to be 60. And then you have the basic 90, or an A, 80s, or a B, and so on. Here's the schedule. Um, this is subject to change. Um, it, it, it doesn't do anyone good in my mind for me to follow the schedule, even if People are having difficulty, a lot of people are having difficulty with the material, so I do sort of gear that to um, the students and how the students are progressing. It's best if you have read the material prior to coming to class, not that I'm going to cover it exactly, but that gives you sort of background information and then, then what I talk about will be more meaningful. Questions at this point? What uh, day of the week do you usually have your uh, homework deadlines? This class is a little different. This class we do not have, in many of my classes I have like weekly assignments. So, um, you know, the, the homework assignments that are due Wednesday or, or Thursday or whatever. This class the assignments are not quite weekly, all right? So um, some of them are, some of them aren't. You, for some, you might have uh, one week. For some, you might have a week and a half. For some, you might have two weeks for. So because of that, each assignment gets its own distinct due date. All right. So unlike other classes where I simply say, hey, the assignment is due Wednesday of that, it is due whatever the specific day is. I don't think we need this file, so I'm going to get rid of it. And lastly, copyright information for educational purposes. Um, review this on your own. This really relates to whether you can take images from a website and use it on your own project within an educational context. Now, the copyright law is different if you're talking about in a classroom environment versus for a personal web page or, or an, uh, you know, some business web page. So you have a little bit more flexibility, but you don't get free reign to use whatever you want. You still need to give proper credit, and you still are not permitted to take excessive amounts of stuff. So this document sort of reviews that. So please take the time to read it. All right. Um, assignments. We'll come back to the assignments 
towards the end of class. Semester project. Read through the project instructions. We will talk about that in a few weeks. I don't know, a couple weeks maybe, something like that. So we won't talk about it today, but we'll talk about it in a few weeks. Any question about just sort of the background information for the course? All right. So this class is, the title of it is Web Database Integration. It involves the use of databases and server-side scripting techniques to create web pages. All right. Those of you who had me for CISS 216, which is the Intro to Web Development, I imagine a lot of a lot of you you folks did. We coded pages in HTML and we use CSS, and we might have played around with a little JavaScript, but, but by and large, we, we did HTML and, and CSS in that class. In those classes, we created what are called static web pages. All right. The word static in this context means unchanging. Probably a better way to define it is it only changes when you manually change it. So if you kept those files for CISS 216 and you pull up your first lab assignment, all right, it would look exactly the same today as it did the day that you turned it in. Nothing would have changed with it. All right. Um, this is well and good, and this is serviceable in some contexts. Like, for example, if I had a restaurant, let's say, and I was doing a website for that restaurant, you know, I might have a website that had my hours and had the menu and had contact information and had stuff like that. Well, that doesn't change too often, right? You know, uh, that could be accomplished via static web pages. All right, you could put your restaurant's website out there, and if you had a change in policy, if you were if you were closed on Mondays, you'd have to go in and manually edit that web page and say, okay, we're closed on Mondays. All right, but. How often does, would, would a restaurant change a policy like that, you know? Maybe periodically, every few months, they make some tweaks to the menu, all right? Not that big a deal to go in and do that. You could probably get by with a static set of web pages for that environment, all right? Let's talk about what happens when there's a static web page, because one thing we do in CISS 216 is we do talk about web pages and we do talk about developing web pages. But once a web page is completed and on the internet, we don't get a lot of we don't spend a lot of time discussing that. So let's take a few minutes discussing what happens when we take our restaurant's web page and put it up on the internet. All right. We will take and put on our web server all our pages. And along with our pages, we'll also include our images and other files, like maybe CSS files and so on. All these are stored somewhere on our web server's disk. All right. What is a web server? Well, a web server, let us rewind a bit. What is a server period? A server is a system, a computer system, that accepts and responds to requests. 